Can you all hear me? Yes. Technical issues to start off with the morning. I wasn't completely ignoring everyone. Um, welcome to my uh, mini report to our members to explain what we're doing in our society since the election in September. Um, before I start and begin, I just want to go through some house rules, guys. Um, one of which is, can you all make sure if you're not muted already, can you do so now? Because I do know we have suffered from um, feedback from the microphones picking up different noises, okay? Um, evidently, you've all seen the adverts in the newsletter and the vellum and Facebook pages, and members have had the opportunity to send in questions they want to pose to me and the committee, which I've got about eight or nine questions already sorted out. So thank you very much for those. And at that point, I would like to say thank you for everyone turning up today. It's really important that we have effective communication and as members, you have a uh, understanding of where we're going with the society, some of the challenges we're facing uh, today um, and moving that those forward, okay? That's my first bit of spiel over with. Obviously, um, when I was elected, I talked about uh, transparency and accountability. I think this is crucial um, to effective leadership and an effective committee um, for the future of the GFS. All I've asked from members so far is the opportunity to serve you and to make sure we have a society for the future. The first 100 days is really important for me because he sets about the, the standard where we're going and our vision and the challenges we will face. When I became the president, I knew those two massive long-term challenges, one of which was our financial position and also our membership. Now, I'm not going through all the numbers and figures today because as a full paid members, associate members, you would have access to the spreadsheet but certainly our membership is decreasing and um, we've lost around 90 members from last year to the renewal. And I know Andrew Gabra has been sending emails and letters out to members who have not renewed to try and boost our membership since then. Um, our financial situation looks quite healthy. Again, if you look on the spreadsheet, it's there in black and white. However, bear in mind some of our costs, which we incur um, to run our society, which would mean, as Andrew said in the AGM, um, we have a limited amount of time before our society becomes financially embarrassed, you could say. But it's not something to laugh about, it's something to um, make a joke because it is really, really important and we need to address this as soon as we can to ensure we've got a future for the next 60 years of the George Farm Society. I suppose that's why I stepped forward for this role and the committee stepped forward to make sure we have a society. Okay. The financial situation and membership, I always thought would be a long-term solution. And please don't judge the committee on expecting us to solve all our problems in a year. It's going to be a lot longer. It's a long-term strategy. And it's going to make sure mean that it's going to take time to see the benefits of those things we're putting in place. Hopefully today you have a more in-depth insight into what's happening and our plans for the future. However, before I continue with that, I'd like to just bring you your attention and obviously your your you will know some of our challenges in the short term we've faced since September. And um, after, I suppose, a honeymoon period of the, for the presidentship of three days. I was uh, asked to call and contact the general manager of the Imperial, who basically explained the situation with the um, Lancastrian room and the Palm Court where they deal with the meals and um, with structural uh, problems, which meant that our next convention would have been in the Washington suite uh, rather than Lancastrian, and also a date change from March to February which was a bit of a surprise for me being a new president, but I met uh, Alison um, in Blackpool. Uh, I took Cassandra, the assistant treasurer with me, 
And I met up with John Taylor and Joe Sadler to look around the rooms, um, the, sorry, the room, um, evidently looking at where the stage was, sound desk and what we had in place with additional four rooms. And, and the general manager was really um, keen to support us and uh, moving rooms. So we ended up with four additional rooms at no extra cost, as well as um, some interesting points I'm going to bring up to now. We had a, a meeting prior to the uh, inspection of the room with Alison, and I've got some news to explain. As president, I managed to renegotiate some of our contract parts, one of which is a, I'm going to have to read this out because I'll have to get it wrong, uh, increase, if you're staying at the Imperial Garden, at the Imperial Garden, Imperial Hotel, we've always had a 10% uh, reduction in price on the George Formby rates. Well, from February, um, we can increase, we'll have an increase, not from by 10% reduction, but a 15% reduction on rooms booked through for the George Formby rate. That's also including concessionary car parking there. Um, also, I negotiated with Alison that if we have day members coming in, if you just come to Blackpool for a day, they are talking about charging those members. But if you are willing to spend £10 on anything in the Imperial, so it could be a pizza, it could be tea, anything you, you're there, if you keep the receipts, they'll actually waive the car parking fee. But also, um, the other thing which um, I managed to get out of the Imperial was that obviously, been going to the Imperial for a long, long time. I've noticed sometimes the GFS rate is more expensive than booking it directly to the Imperial. And I mentioned this to Alice and, and she was quite upset about that because she expects the GFS rate to be the cheapest rate possible. So Alison agreed that even if we book a GFS rate now and 24 hours before the booking takes place, and there's a cheaper rate, we can cancel free of charge the GFS rate and purchase a cheaper rate. And that's something new, again, what the Imperial and I managed to negotiate. So straight away, after three days, I visited Blackpool, spoke to Alison, looked around the room with Cassie, John and Joe. And then I suppose um, the next uh, challenge uh, we faced was, and he's here now today, is Tony Thornton. Let's give him a round of applause. It's great to see Tony. It's great to see Tony. And I want to give him, give him my personal thanks for just completing the vellum. I mean, I know Andrew Gavras put a lot of work in sending it out. And I just want to say thank you very much, Tony. And also, it's so it's such a relief for me and the membership to see you well and you know wanting to get back into the things. But please don't don't overdo it. Take your time. We all understand. Okay. Thank you, Tony. So, you know, obviously with Tony's health not being 100%, and Cassandra came up with the idea of really addressing one issue which we've had in the society, and that's the lack of communication. And we produced a newsletter, well, actually, I haven't produced it. Cassandra produced a newsletter, and Andrew Gavra, uh, again, did, you know, did so much work in getting it published and then sending it out to the membership. So at least the membership would understand why there was no vellum and what was happening with the convention in the different room, etc. So again, thank you, Cassie, for your work on behalf of the committee and membership. It's been really well. Without that, we've been really in the sun. So well done, Cassie. So after two slight major uh, hazards we've uh, circumnavigated, uh, we then moved on. Um, to the um, next part of our issues we've dealt with, we start to look at the long-term um, challenges we face. Um, and I was caught by Peter Jetson in the Blackpool Convention in September, talking about the 125th anniversary of the Markham Winter Gardens. And Markham, if many people will recall, was a great success. We went there twice in 2014. And I think, I think it was 2013, and I've got some photographs, and they're very embarrassing, of Stuart Lauber and Lewis Clifton playing outside. They were very young, um, but I think everyone who went there really, really enjoyed it. So I travelled with Dennis Lee, Vice President, 
um, up to Morecambe to have a look around. I know John Taylor had been uh, there a couple of times. I took Dennis on the rationale. Dennis is a member who has set up and organised lots of conventions, uh, Parbalele, Lando Nove Youth Festival, lots of things like that. Great experience. And we looked around the room. We sussed it out. We looked, I spoke to the chairman of the Winter Garden, who's a, a new lady called Vanessa. She's a professor. She works at Sheffield University. And uh, she was very, very keen for the GFS to visit Markham in the, in, in the future. And with that, I spoke to my colleagues on the committee and we agreed we'll have a one-day convention on the 6th of August at Markham Winter Gardens. Yes, yeah, Suzanne's writing it down. Well done. <laughs> I will be putting an advert and details together briefly on the Facebook page. And if uh, I speak to Peter, I'm sure I'll put it on our website. Um, but there'll be more details in the next vellum issue. So again, that's something which I know members will be really pleased. And it's another opportunity to go further afield, away from Blackpool, where our core group of supporters are, onto somewhere a bit further away. Um, and I suppose that's, that links into our future, because looking back at our rules, and I'm sure Steve Langford and Caroline, they did some work on the rule updates uh, in, in the past, but I think we need to you know, as I said, and lots of people have spoken to me about this, about our rules don't reflect our society. And for people to join the GFS, they need to know that our society reflects today. And that's not surrendering our great history or George Formby or the GFS um, traditions. Absolutely not. But we do need a set of rules to really make our society quite bespoke in reflecting and attracting new members. So with that, we set up the committee, set up a subcommittee to look at the rules, and that included Claire Oath, our secretary. Give us a wave, Claire. Claire and um, Dennis Lee. We know who Dennis is, is there. Okay, and we worked, we did a mammoth uh, Zoom meeting, four and a half hours going through all the rules. We looked at everything what it entails, not just one or two bits, everything. We looked at from the very first part in the rule book right to the last. We've been looked at electoral reform. We've looked at uh, membership, conventions, everything you can mention. Is, if it's in the rules, we've looked at it. We've also added some extra parts. But again, I'm not going to any specifics um, with that because it needs to go to the committee, a full committee meeting, to discuss those changes, updates. and then. The most important part, it needs to go to the membership because the membership will need to decide and ratify those one way or the other. Okay. So again, it's not something we've done lightheartedly. It's something we needed to be done and we need to address that situation within this first couple of months. And hopefully we'll have those rules in at the very latest by the next day, Jim. I'm hoping we might be able to do it before in perhaps in June, but we just don't know at the moment. But certainly with the work's being done, it's all there. We need to just make sure it gets a mandate from the committee and from the members. Okay. Excuse me. Moving on, uh, we also looked at technology. And Stuart Boston, I don't know if Stuart's here, I think I saw him. Stuart Boston came to see me in September and spoke to me about TikTok. Now, and Lewis and uh, myself had spoken about Instagram and Lewis set up, I don't know if people know this, Lewis set up on his own, the GFS Facebook page. And just like Peter Plard set up the website on his own 25 years ago. So Lewis and I and um, Steve, or Cassie and Jay Taylor, uh, had a chat about the Facebook page and ways we could increase our membership by attracting new members. But there's also underpin, under matter, under, uh, so it undermines this because not only do we need new members, we also need younger members to take the society forward. And that's no disrespect to people who join at the early 60s, 70s, 80s, but we, we genuinely, genuinely do need to look at the younger members so that we've got a lifeline ready to take over the society when we're long, long gone. So with that, uh, I spoke to Stuart Boston, who seems to be a TikTok expert, 
and uh, TikTok in particular, uh, as Cassie said, was really more geared to a young and younger audience. So that's one way we're going to develop. So the committee uh, asked Cassie and Jay, who work through Facebook, their businesses go through Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, as well as Louis, who's, um, as you all seen the Facebook page, there's a lot of really important content, interesting content on there, to work out a social media strategy plan to try and attract new members and also a strategy rather than just hit, doing a hit and miss but really focusing it to attract new members um, looking at uh, posts which are going to be interesting for younger people looking at when do we post those times I know Jay mentioned um, to post them perhaps twice a day once about eight o'clock and once in the evening for people to are going to work and actually access them rather than miss them, and also the algorithms. I don't know if anyone understands this, but basically, if you keep posting, the algorithm set in TikTok and Instagram pushes your post further up to the list, up to the top of the list. If you only post once, it goes down, and we need it to be a constant stream of um, information and articles to make sure that we get the maximum uh, reward by people being interested in our society, going onto the website and then hope, hoping that they join. So that's the second uh, subcommittee, which they'll be feeding back our next committee meeting with their findings. Um, and of course, I suppose one thing which I'm really geared up for, and you, many people know, I like, I love playing ukulele and I love going to the branches and performing. And Jay Taylor who's got a background in live music and gigs he knew. He played with Oasis, I think, next door to where he lived at one point. Um, it's just shaking his head. I've exaggerated that. He actually lived next door to them, I believe. Borrowed some strings from them. But basically, Jay's got a history in uh, music and he's creating a, a target list of uh, concerts, gigs, festivals. It might be youth festivals where we could look at putting our outreach okay, into those festivals, just like Dennis and Gary have done in the past with Parbalele, which is a fantastic success. Also with um, the Landudno Extravaganza. That's right, Extravaganza in the past. So again, to try and push our name out there. And uh, that's where you guys come in, because you know, if that's going to happen, you can't rely, we cannot rely on three or four people. You can't rely on Dale and uh, Tom Fletcher and uh, Alan to do it. We need members to support those, okay? Support those venues, support those festivals to get our name out there. So that's what we need members to come together and support you know, our ideas and our vehicles. So we've got outreach. But there's another part of that because I know Sean is a professional, Alan Yates is a, uh, a professional, um, and Obviously, we've got Andy Eastwood. And one thing I thought we could do is to encourage some of our professional players to go out as an ambassador, as an ambassador role to try and promote the GFS where they may play. And I've spoke to Andy already, and he's agreed to be with our ambassadors. And but obviously, it's not just him going on stage. We we also created some resources or in the process of creating real resources. I've not asked Cassie yet, but I'm sure she will help me out on this. Some flyers for um these ambassadors, as well as branches to have, to post round to try and promote our society again. And it's all about promotion. For me, the way to achieve our goals, which is to perpetuate the GFS and George Formby, is we need to go out there and advertise and get new members. Okay, that's my personal idea. That's what I believe. We need to go out there and outreach members, be it the ukulele fraternity or anyone we can grab Get them, enjoy, get them joined, show them how to play with a new, show them how to play banjo uke. And we've seen the success of the Zoomers in members, people joining the Zoom, um, Zoomers and actually then joining the society and buying, you know, books, strings, et cetera. And that's where our future lies, is getting new members in. Okay, so moving on. Um, going from the list now. The one thing which we have achieved and, you know, it's been an issue which we've looked at earlier. We had the um, mayor of Blackpool coming in via the Zoom Zoomers who um, spoke to her on the 365 Zoom meeting. And she was very supportive 
and was very welcoming and discussed with me different venues where we could move to, which I presumed would be cheaper. Now, I'm not, I can't go into all the details at the moment, but evidently you've all seen the cost of the Imperial, okay? The committee will have to look at our conventions and that's part of the rule, the rules we've been looking at. Um, but for me, we do need to, again, reach out to further afield rather than just uh, the Blackpool area. And that might mean having so many conventions in Blackpool, at whatever venue it is, and actually going out further afield to attract new members. I know in the past, uh, Harry Hill mentioned we came to Blackpool about doing a convention down at Brighton and you know doing workshops, and that could be a way forward. I'm not sure. There's no answers on this. This is just you know things we've discussed in the past. But certainly the committee are now really focusing on where we're going to do some conventions and trying to attract new members to join the GFS. Okay. So we've looked really at lots of things and I'm hoping that the membership will realise that we've worked very hard, the committee and myself, to overcome our short-term challenges, but also to look at the long-term issues we need to face. And I realise that lots of members are really concerned. Okay, and with this, the membership had opportunities to send in questions and I'm happy to go through these questions now and try and answer them as much as I can. But please be aware, some of the answers I would like to tell you now, I can't because they need to be ratified by the committee and the membership, okay? We are aware of this situation with the costs. We are aware of the situation with the membership fees and the membership in general, okay? So um, I received one question, excuse me. One question from Simon Rose. Uh, he was concerned about the membership and age uh, of the members. And with increasing outgoings and fallen revenues, can we raise fi uh, financial contributions? He suggested um, we charge an entry fee for a convention or increase the membership fees. And again, we are on the ball on this. We are discussing this and the rule changes. It will go to the committee, we'll have a discussion in February and it will go back out to the members to decide. We really do need to address this. I know people are concerned and I'm concerned that some members who can afford it can pay additional charges, but there's so many members who probably can't come to Blackpool because of the expense of travelling, can't come to Blackpool, they're paying more and more increased subscription, might even fall out the members membership. So it's a, a balancing act to see what's best for the membership to ensure we've got the members, but also the financial foundation to move the society on. Okay. Um, Simon also mentioned a PDF vellum a link on the website, on the website where members could download the vellum. Again, this is another topical issue which we've discussed briefly. Um, discussed briefly in the previous committees, and I believe it came up in the AGM. Uh, from a question from, I don't know, Sean Moises. Okay, it's not been forgotten, Sean, but again, as part of the rule changes we've been looking at, it has come up and it does need to be addressed one way or the other. And it is a difficult one, but we do need to think about the balance of keeping it streamlined, but also the quality of provision for the membership, because we can't have only one vellum and one convention a year and still charge the same amount because I think people would um, feel the GFS is diluted. That's my own personal opinion. So we do need to have a, address this and really look at a balance, okay? So again, I'm sure everyone's got their own opinions. But we, as I've said, it's, that will go to the committee and then it'll go to the membership. Okay, so everyone will have their say. Um, question two, again, Tom Cutler, uh, a similar question, can we put the membership fee by £10? Many members would pay this increase to secure the future of the GFS. And I personally would agree on that. And that's my own rationale. But I mean, I'm, I'm lucky and I can afford an increase. And as, as I've said, some people may not. So again, this will be discussed at the committee. But again, I think it's down to the members now. You're, you are all here. You've all got a voice. You've all got Zoom. 
this is your chance to text, message the secretary, me, the assistant tre- uh, secretary, on your opinions. Now, give us some idea where people are. Yeah, it's your society. Okay, well, we will come back to you in the when we've got the rules sorted out. We'll come back to have the mandate from the membership itself, not just by six or eleven people. Okay, it is your society. It's what we're doing for you, no one else but for you. Okay. So, question three was from my friend Jeff, and I think Sean also had a similar um, point. Is there a need for four conventions per year? And again, this is a very topical. Is there a need for four conventions? Or is there a need for three convention at Blackpool, one convention somewhere else? Is there a need to have a, a convention at Blackpool, but a different venue? Again, very important questions. I can say now, uh, Jeff, I can't see on the screen, but I'm sure you're here. I can say now I've been in contact with a different venue already at Blackpool. I'm going to look around some more different venues to see what sort of price and availability and quality they can provide us for future conventions. It might not, it might not go any further than that, but I am on the ball on that one. Okay. So again, this is your chance. Just put your hands up. Who would do free conventions at Blackpool? Just put your hands up now. Would be happy to do in free. Okay, hands down. Who would still want four conventions? Jill, put your hand up and vote. <laughs> Okay, it, again, it's a mixed bag and we do, do need to have a, that mandate from the membership. Okay, thank you for that, guys. Um, so, yeah, so there's lots of questions on the conventions. And I know people are very passionate about what the society provides. And we need to make sure we have that quality. Even if we have lockdowns, we have some sort of quality for members to um, access and, you know, enjoy. So, uh, another question four. This is a, a, another interesting one, and I think it. I think the people who know, know the committee will know the answer. Um, is there a need for branches, and is the committee committed to them? Well, I know Lewis and Cassie, uh, Dennis. I'm trying to think of the other committee members. John Taylor, Joe. They all go to branches or run branches. Joe and I run branches. Dennis helps out at uh, West Down and Sale. Cassie helps out at Castleford. <laughs> I have visited as vice president all the branches. Uh, Dale and I and Tom Stratford, who was sadly ill, um, we visited a lot of the branches, in particular Sale, West Down and Castleford and South Yorkshire branch. But also, uh, the last couple of weeks, Dale and I have visited Crew. Liverpool, South Yorkshire, Castleford. Mm, and we're going to Stalbridge next Tuesday. Branches are important and the committee will support branches. I know Dennis and I share lots of similar views about branches and, you know, supporting them through creating packs to help them uh, promote themselves and also encourage new members is certainly one easy fix we can do to support those branches. Branches are... I like the melting pot of bringing new people who would not necessarily be involved with the GFS into the GFS fold. And, you know, it's a great opportunity for, for myself as well to learn new songs and practice them at the branches before I go to Blackpool, or in Dale's case, um, learn his old songs, I still get them wrong. But <laughs> Dale is not laughing at that. That's a joke, Dale. I'm trying to bring humour to this meeting. Well, branches are very important, and I wholeheartedly support them, and as president, I'll continue supporting them. Okay. Um, questions. Okay, five from Lee Ray, Ray, Lee. Where's Lee? Lee Raybould. Ah, you're there. Lynn. I'm sorry, Lynn. I, yeah, Lynn and Lee. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Okay. I, keep, I am not very good on names. So, okay, uh, Lynn and Lee. Okay, so basically, uh, your question was, um, could we have a postal vote in place, in place as well as a the traditional morning vote during the AGM for um, the committee? This is another hot potato, and I know lots of people spoke to me at Blackpool, both in November and in September, 
And we are going forward with some sort of mechanism to allow all the membership to vote in uh, elections. What way that's going, how it's going to look has not been decided. But again, part of this subcommittee, which Claire and Dennis and I have been working on, we've looked at different mechanisms for this to happen. And that's going to go to the full committee. And then at the next AGM we have, it'll be voted on by the membership. So it is going to happen, but I'm not sure which way is what how it's going to look. But I think we're definitely going to increase the numbers who are going to have the opportunity to take part in that. Okay, is that all right, Lynn? Yeah. Okay, I know lots of people mention that, and it's not something that's just it's been ongoing. And it's been, I think it's been more um things come to the fall with lockdown as well, because in all fairness to all the you know members and the conventions and the vellums and everything and the committee, we have been curtailed by the lockdowns of the last 18 months. And it has had a massive effect on membership as well as people and you know people's health and families and stresses on people. So please appreciate that. It's not something we've just given lip service to, it's something we are working on. Okay. Um, got another question here. Communication is key for the members and the Zoom meeting is a step forward. Uh, have you any more plans for speaking to the membership? And I presume that's to me. I'm quite happy to communicate as much as I can to the membership, be it in the vellum or on the website or the Facebook page. I'm quite happy to do Zoom meetings and uh, I really feel that it is something we, we do need to have because it's your society and you elect the committee to make the decisions, but it is, in essence, it is it's your society. So, yes, if the membership wants, I can come back in the future and update you um, on what's happening. That's not a problem. OK, just could I have a quick show of hands. Who thinks this is a good idea? Put your hand up, Alan Yates. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, John. Um, it's a bit stressful for me, I'll be honest, but <laughs> I don't mind doing it if it helps you know, people understand where we're going with the membership. Okay. Um, so the next question. Okay, a final question is from Malcolm Wood. Have we got anything? Uh, well, I'll read it out. He's put contingency planning for future lockdowns. What's the committee got planned? Well, I'll be honest, um, Malcolm, I don't know if he's on, but when we were elected in September, I believe within 10 days we had a Zoom meeting with all the committee. And that was to discuss um, the issues with the Imperial. Okay. And we decided, Steve, the chairman decided, as well as myself and the committee, that we should have in the meetings that we need, we will have. Okay, we will not just sit to four meetings a year. We'll have as many as it needs. And in those emergencies, we'll have a Zoom meeting. And if Mr. Boris Johnson, he's the Prime Minister apparently. No, he's the Prime Minister. If he decides that we have a lockdown or we can't meet at the convention, then we will meet again and we will have plans in, in place. I know Cassandra, I know Lewis have spoken to me you know, informally about ideas. I spoke to my friend, where is he? Matt Richard somewhere, and Suzanne, um, about different things about in the future. And we will have something in place if, if uh, we have a lockdown and we can't go to Blackpool, okay? And that might take the form of lessons, concerts, uh, interviews. And by the way, Dennis, before I forget, if we do have a lockdown, I'm doing an interview with you. All right, so I've got the questions already written up. All right, mate. <laughs> so we've got some more plans already in place if that happens, okay? But again, the Imperial, the general manager has spoken to me and I request that if there's any chance of a lockdown that she contacts me ASAP and I would then go through a committee and then explain to the membership, be it through the vellum or website or Facebook or on here on this sort of media that what's happening. 
Okay, and that's all I can do. And hopefully, touch wood, we won't get to that point. And oh, excuse me, I'm drinking fizzy pop. I'm sorry, but um, we will be looking at um, increasing some of our strategies to mitigate the chances of COVID spreading at the convention. And again, I've been downloading some stock resources from school, what we've been putting in place. I know Jay Taylor's got some ideas as well. So we'll be coming together prior to the committee, explaining what we're going to put in, put in place to try and decrease the chance of COVID. Okay, now, um, I think that is it. I would like to say now, I'm just looking around, um, hello, Kevin. I didn't see you were here. Steve, you're here as well. I would like to say now, um, that really concludes our Zoom report. And I want to say thank you to Jay for hosting this uh, meeting. And thank you for everyone here who sent questions in, but also for taking the time to participate in this because I think it's very important for the future of the society to know where we are, what we've done so far, and what we've got in place now to move the society forward okay so with that i'd like to say thank you very much again thank you jay and thank you for everyone and uh, jay it's back to you